Got it. You hear me now? Yep. Yep. Hey, man, how's, how's practice look this week? You feeling better about Hazelwood and Latham's chances of playing and general health of the team? Well, I think we're healthy. Um, obviously, there's a guy or two that hadn't practiced uh, all fall. So, but the guys have been uh, dinged up a little bit. I feel real good about them being able to play. And um, so I feel pretty good about all that. Hazelwood's uh, looked good this week. And uh, so I think we'll, we'll be fine injury-wise. Okay. And then um, just the product of the fast starts that you've done in practices and all, do you feel like um, how, how that might translate to the game to get off to a quicker start? Well, I hope so. You know, obviously mm -hmm. there's some concern there uh, from what how we practiced uh, in the past for uh, slow starts um, against uh, Rice last year and against Penn State in a bowl game with coming off a of layoff. So certainly wasn't the case necessarily on defense, but offense it was. So we're trying to do some different things. Part of it is stay consistent with fast starts. Um, uh, in practice, uh, part of it is um, how we're trying to attack Indy uh, the first period of practice. So we certainly made a press towards that uh, coming off of any water breaks and those things, trying to get into a fast pace and, and good uh, quality reps. Uh, so we know what our weaknesses are from a year ago, and we're trying to attack them, and hopefully it works. Dre. Hey, Coach. Uh, curious, what's left to, to check off the list this week? I mean, you guys have been prepared for this team for a long time. It's the first game. What's left on the list? I thank you. At this point in time, um, you're you're looking at practice 23, 24, and 25. And it's, it's different than um, – what might be a regular week, you know? So your practice schedules, we we chose to go pretty heavy on uh, Monday and Tuesday and then starting to wind down a little bit. Today, we're gonna go in spiders and tomorrow as well. Uh, but the, the the things, you know, I, I wanna make sure that we know exactly who our opponent is. So in our, in our, meetings uh we're we're going to start with cincinnati film I, I learned as an assistant that a lot of times you're you are going over the tape so much from practice that you don't get to the opponent as much as you'd like to so we're starting our individual meetings with uh, understanding exactly who we are playing and uh but other than that i think we're pretty sound in our special teams game um and I think we're pretty sound offense and defensively. Um, uh, we've had, you know, obviously four practices on Cincinnati and maybe four days of a period of practice was strictly for Cincinnati. We know it's going to be a really physical game. So part of my concern was getting back healthy. And so I think, I think, you know, other than that, Trey, just – making sure that we start each meeting on the University of Cincinnati uh, for the mind. Uh, we, You know, what happens in, in the game of football, you're anxious about things that you're not, you're not totally sure about. And I think our big thing for our staff now is to take the anxiety out of the game. And we're going to see some things that we're not ready for. I get it. Uh, but uh, I want to get these guys confident in the mind. Um, by watching a little bit more and emphasizing Cincinnati a little bit more than what we have because uh, we've been worried about ourselves the entire camp. And so these last few days, I want them to really get to know the opponent on film a little better. And it looks like a good group of recruits coming in. Um, how important is that bringing recruits to games? Because you don't get a whole lot of opportunities. Weather could be an issue. Timing could be an issue. But this looks like 2.30 is a good opportunity and should be a really good crowd also. Yeah, you know, it's very important, especially, you know, with our fans. I think I think our stadium will be as as uh, entertaining, as loud as as whatever you want to call it, on a Saturday afternoon as anywhere in the country. Um, 
let's face it, the, the state's excited about the football team and uh, we're excited to show, show the state our team. Um, with that said, that has, goes a long way in recruiting. Uh, whether you go to a place that's half full or whether you have one that's going to be full like ours and loud. And, and uh, you know, we have one of the most special things in the world in our hog call. I mean, it's, uh, it's powerful. It's moving. It's a lot of things. And, uh, you know, to, to have that stadium full, full and calling the hogs, it, it certainly helps us recruit. And uh, we're excited about having the brand of guys we have coming in here for this weekend. Bob? Hey, Sam. Hey, my first I had a question for, for Nate that wanted to ask you. He couldn't be on, but um, he was wanting to get your, <clears throat> get your thoughts on the, your defensive line matchup against uh, Cincinnati's offensive line. And, you know, do you feel like you have some playmakers like Ridgeway and Trey Williams for last year that maybe can get double teamed and still make plays? You know, if you looked on paper, um, they're, you know, they're, they're way ahead of us. You know, they have five starters coming back. We, we don't, uh, you know, we lost on paper, all three of our starters. Now, obviously we played uh, two separate lines most of the time, you know, they were in about four plays last year and out four and in four and out four. Uh, but I, I, you know, we, we have a plan uh, certainly uh, against a, their great offensive line and they are, they're really good. We have a plan. Uh, we think it's. We think we can have success as long as we can execute it and, and run the ball and play hard. Uh, but uh, that's going to be a big challenge. You don't see many guys that have five returning starters up front and all the starts that they have in there. We're, we're fortunate that we we have four. You know, on our offensive line, we don't. However, on our D line, so um, that'll be a key part, in my opinion, to the way the. Well, way the ball game goes. If I was Cincinnati, I'd come in there and turn to turn around, hand the football off, and see if we can stop the run. Uh, we'll see if we can or not, but and we'll see obviously what they do. But uh, I think that's going to be one of the biggest keys there. And I, I like what we've done on our D line uh, this fall camp. And yeah, with Dalton, I remember when camp started, you you know expressed I don't know concerns the right word, but you know how Dalton would hold up physically and. Seems like he's held up pretty well. I know he told us when we talked to him earlier that he felt good. He's a captain. I don't think guys would vote for him for captain if he was struggling in camp. So what kind of camp has he had? What are you expecting from him? He's had a good camp. We're very fortunate that we have Tykees Crawford as well that can play out there, you know, if Dalton uh, gets dinged up or whatever, you know. Um, but he's had a he's had a super good camp and and I think he's really ready to go. And he hadn't missed any any reps that we didn't take him out of uh, in camp. So one more I saw where uh, Ridgeway made the Cowboys. That's uh, awesome. I just wonder what, what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, good for him. And then Monteric Brown made his squad. And, of course, Traylon Burks made his. And, uh, yeah, we're really proud. That was our three guys got drafted last year. And I guess I saw Grant Morgan got signed to the – um, scout team or the excuse me, I don't know what they call it in the NFL. Uh, the practice squad. Practice squad. I'm sorry, and uh, so that's that's really good and proud of all those guys. And those are hard days right there, waiting to see if you get cut or get on the team. A lot of money difference in in the two, but we're all we're proud of all those guys and and the ones that went in there and got released. We're, we're proud of those two. But that that was really cool with Ridgeway. Uh, getting on the Dallas Cowboys with uh, Mr. Jones's team. That was, that was, that was really cool. Okay. Thanks, Sam. Tom? You know, how much you tackle live during camp is always a calculation and cert certainly what it was, wasn't was in years past. Uh, how, how well do you think you guys are going to do at live tackling um, based on, you know, what you've seen in camp? Well, we haven't. And um, – so we've tackled an individual, uh, made a big emphasis of it in 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 different teach uh, periods, certainly for the defense. Uh, you know, we had a long talk about it, to be honest with you, Tom, as a staff. And you know, I'm old school in a lot of a lot of ways, I guess, because I'm old. But uh, it, it never was a conversation of whether you were going to tackle to the ground in a scrimmage before until the last 
you know, two or three years and maybe five years. Uh, we, we feel like what we did is the best for our program and our kids uh, to, to keep us as healthy. We're very physical at practice. Um, so we felt like it was the best thing for us to keep our kids healthy as possible and opportunity to win the game with having our guys ready to play and, and tackle an individual. And so it certainly has changed. I don't know who's changed that way with us, um, but that's what we believed in and we feel like we'll tackle well. Okay. And just a general question about team speed, like in, in your years here, where do you feel like you've advanced in that uh, department? If you feel like you're a faster team, you know, to be perfectly honest, I think when we first came in here, I felt like you could change your team the fastest way by getting speed. And we really didn't care the size of the guy. And I think the the thing that's changed in our three going on three years here is is certainly the size of our lines, but more as important, we have fast guys that are big. And uh, in the past, our you know we had the ones we could get were small, if that makes sense. You know, a lot of them. Obviously, Burks was here before, but now we have big and faster guys, and I think that's probably the biggest change. Uh, over the last few years for us. Hutch. Sam, y'all named your uh, captains yesterday. It uh, didn't seem like there were very many surprises. Were you pleased with the, the group that, that got voted captains yesterday? I loved it. I mean, you know, whenever they, you know, we have a tally of the votes and they bring it to me and my mom, you know, I had the biggest grin and biggest smile. Now, uh, Basically, the two guys uh, saying most proud of doesn't that that's not right. Look, I think everybody in the land that knows anything about Arkansas football knew that KJ Jefferson and Jalen Catalan were going to get voted captain. The other two were, you know, we have so many guys that could fill that void. I mean, we do. Blair's one of them, you know, and and uh, certainly Ricky Stromberg and all that. But when I saw Dalton Wagner on there, you guys, I don't know if you see how the team looks at the guy, but to come back for his, you know, super senior year and get elected captain. And when I introduced him to the team as one, I mean, he, he was grateful. I mean, like, and Bumper pulled to tell me it was the highest, award that he's ever gotten as a football player really cool and so you, you're looking at two super seniors that came back were elected captain by their team I mean it was a special moment you know I'm not a big video guy of all that kind of stuff because you know I knew there was some guys man wish I wish I would have got it you know what I'm saying but man was I proud that the team voted Wagner and and pull as captains uh, along with the other two but like I already expressed they we we knew they were going to get voted captain but I thought that was really cool and really happy for those guys they're going to be captains of the 20, 2022 team for life and that's that's really cool and then also I'm curious at the last couple of days of practice and maybe provided you more clarity on your your cornerback spot you know opposite of Hudson Clark yeah, you know, um, I think we have a little more clarity there. Um, we have four, you know, you know, and and really, you know, with Kyrie Johnson being in that four and five and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I feel really good about um, what we're going to do. Uh, I'm not really ready to say what we're going to do but I feel yes to answer your question yes I feel pretty clear about what's going on out there and where we're going to start the game with it and and feel really good about it Scotty hey Sam I wanted to ask you about AJ Green um with him having a, a full preseason under his belt do you feel like we'll finally see him more full go full speed I guess in, in the return game I hope so you know he's had a good camp with it catching the ball well, um, you know, you have to do it a little bit to gain true confidence in yourself, in most people. You know, there's some guys that are just 
natural and they go out there and they're not, you no, know, not worried about anything. Just I'm going to catch it. And I'm going to, you know, he's not one of those guys. I think we had to build confidence in him uh, as he was building our confidence, you know, as well. And uh, so he's done a really good job. And, and I, I know what you're saying with the, with the question is, will we see 10, three speed this year, you know, um, is what we're looking for. That's what he is. And, and, uh, I feel like we'll get much closer to that 10, three than what he was a year ago. They talk about rocket a lot at tailback. How's, how's AJ looked at, at, at running back this, this preseason? He's been fine. I, you know, he's done a good job. He's better. Uh, I think, um, uh, Dominion is pressing him. Uh, to be honest with you there. Um, uh, at the same time, uh, he's better than what he was a year ago. So I think we're in pretty good shape there. Um, I think everybody knows we'd love to have Dominique Johnson back as soon as we can get him back. And whether it's this week or not, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if he's practiced enough for this week or been able to practice enough, but uh, that'll be kind of a game time uh, scenario for us there. But uh, we need him back. He's a big back for us, a good back. And, uh, uh, but I like where we're at with those other two guys. Three, but you ask about AJ and Rashad. Yeah. Christina. Coach, this is more of an off field question about you, but is since you became a head coach, is there a part of a game day that you look forward to the most or, or something about your routine that you've developed over your three years as a head coach now? I like to win and go in the locker room and see those kids that I'm telling you, that's a great question. It's priceless. There's nothing in the world can buy it. There ain't enough money in the world can buy it. But when we win and I get to go in there and brag on our coaches and see their face and then see the kids face of hard work. And when we win, that's why you coach and it's, incredible and that's i love that i love fridays when i talk to the team you asked specifically i think on game day and i love saturdays before we go out and it's 30 seconds it's 35 seconds but you can feel it you you can feel it and what's getting ready to happen and the excitement on the kids and uh those those are the special moments uh, obviously, um, when you win and you're around those kids, it's it's incredible. Trey. Coach, it seems like every week I change my mind on which one of your wide receivers I like the best. I'm wondering I, if you, if you, you do the same. Me. Yeah, if you do the same. Do you think – do you see, like, maybe three or four guys kind of evenly distributing, or do you think a guy will eventually emerge as kind of a go-to? Well, I'm not for sure, Trey, that I'm not very similar to you. Um, when somebody passes somebody in your mind, it doesn't mean the other ones. That's, when you got a pretty good group, whenever somebody passes a guy, it doesn't mean he's not very good. If you have a bad group, a guy passes a guy, you probably got a bad player that just got passed. That's mm -hmm. not the case. And I think you would agree with me there as well. But uh, yes, I think there's been this guy's our best receiver, that guy's our best receiver, this guy. But I think right now we have four that have been um, separated themselves a little bit, either size talent-wise or talent-wise or the way that they're running routes uh, with Jackson, Landers, Hazelwood, and and Warren Thompson. Those are, those are our top four receivers. Um, and I, I don't know who the best one is, but we'll, we'll see who the best gamer is. That's that's what we'll find out Saturday. And a lot of times those guys separate themselves on a Saturday afternoon. I always hear from a lot of coaches is um, Friday night. Is, you talked about anxiety and stuff, but Friday night is still a difficult night to sleep. How important and is these next two nights in terms of making sure that your guys get good night rest? Do you, do you preach that to them? And we have absolutely we have that and and rehabbing and uh, you know hydrating uh, those things are going to be big you know that I'm not a big scientist I don't know all the fancy stuff about but they did tell me that 
you have to hydrate several days before you know your your activity whatever it might be and so we've certainly pushed that and our nutritionists and our strength staff have, have done a really good job of getting them in the cold tubs and and uh, now we're just working on the mental aspect of them as well um this you know they got to lock in it's a big big deal college football playing at university of arkansas huge 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 deal and and we will take that anxiety out of them as much as we can in all aspects. Wrap us up, Bob. Okay, Sam, you're going into your third season as a head coach. Obviously, the first season was pretty weird with COVID, but um, I don't know for I know you're not relaxed, you know. But but I mean, do you feel uh, how, how how do you feel differently going into your third year than maybe the the first year, or the second year, even? Bob, my first year. I didn't know anything. And there'll be some people say I still don't. And that's <laughs> fine. But my first year was how do I call the officials over to talk to them? How do, you know, can I, uh, how do, what, which, where's switch one, two, three, hit this button to go to special teams? It was all nerve wracking. You know, what, what are we going to do? Um, uh, pregame, all these different things that are now, you know, year three. And so you're, you're, you're more comfortable uh, as anything. If you, if you've done it before, you become more comfortable. You got to watch that too, because with a little bit of comfortability, then you can get lax. I don't think we've done that, but uh, certainly I know all, you know, we've, we've had the coordinators back. So that's helped me tremendously, all three of them. And, uh, but going into this game, I think we've seen the only question mark, Bob, is we haven't started fast on offense when we've had some time, uh, whether it be the bowl or whether it was the, uh, even though the week off last year, I think Mississippi State, we did fine offensively after, you know, off the bye week. But um, other than that, you know, I know our, Players know us, and we know, you know, I know the coaches, and so there is a big comfort in that, and and uh, I feel good about it. Have you seen, a, like, a moonshine iced tea liquor I, t-shirt yet, or are you waiting for that to come out? You know, what's a, no, I haven't seen one. If we could be fortunate enough to win, I'll guarantee there'll be some of them, you know, but um, – I don't know. It's the first games are ones that where you just you, you better be ready because you don't have a clue what they're getting ready to do. They've got their base principles, you know. But you walk into LSU at night and they cover zero you all night, you know they they you, they're going to a different party than what you might have expected, you know. And we got to adjust. They'll do the same thing. Coach Fickle's such a wonderful, great coach that. They'll 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 do the same thing on whatever we're trying to do, but these are different deals now. First game of year because you really don't know you don't know a whole lot about what's coming at you. And uh, even though they've got it, you know, same defensive coordinator and you know their offensive coordinator was was a quarterback coach and all those type things, you find out a lot about your team first two or three series of the game. In in uh, in my opinion that first game so we'll have to be ready to make adjustments this one popped in my head you mentioned Luke fickle said he wrestled you're from oklahoma that's a big wrestling state did you ever you you look like you could have wrestled did you ever wrestle in high school or junior high or anything well it would have been heavyweight and uh, uh i did wrestle in fifth grade uh at the gary invitational and uh I got beat on riding time. That's back when riding for the championship. I think there was four of us in the in the there was only four guys big enough. I happened to be one of them. And uh I got beat three to two riding time, which means he was on top of me longer than I was on top of him. You know, they don't count it anymore. But so I lost. And then after that I so I'd take up basketball. It seemed to be a little easier sport to me, but I wasn't even good there either. But yes, I did wrestle in fifth grade. Got beat by a sixth grader. 
Well, see, he had an advantage. That wasn't fair. Well, he did have an advantage, but if you're going to the point where Coach Fickle and I are going to wrestle, that will not happen because he put me in some kind of double chicken wing, and I'm not trying to do all that. Okay, thanks. I'm surprised Bob didn't ask you if you remember the guy's name who you wrestled. I do remember the guy's name, but I'm not going to give it out right now because he'll have he'll make headlines on me. <laughs> thanks, Coach. All right, guys. Thanks, thanks. Have a good one. Saturday.